Economics 115, the Survey of Economics, Unit 1. A few words before we delve into the first of the nine circles. The book is not only mandatory, it is highly helpful. Now, I'm not going to be lecturing directly from the book. I'll be more taking key concepts and integrating them into the lectures. I'm also going to be presenting material that's not in the book, and these are fair game for test questions as well. I'm not going to be lecturing on every concept presented in the book, this doesn't mean that you won't see these questions on a test. So, fair warning. Economics is full of jargon, and you'd be very well served to take note of key terms, both in these presentations, as well as at the end of the chapters in the book. Now, for those of you that may have missed it, that is what economists call a hint. What is economics? Well, economics is the study of the allocation of scarce resources among competing and unlimited wants. Now, there are three key points in that short sentence. Allocation, scarce resource, and competing and unlimited wants. With allocation, we got to figure out who gets what, how to fairly distribute these resources. Scarce resources, we do not live in a land of plenty. Every given resource is scarce, even the renewable ones. The fact that there is not an unlimited available supply of a thing makes it by definition scarce. Here in Southern Oregon, clean air is taken mostly for granted, but during fire season, you will see that clean air is a resource. Now, with scarce resources, there's got to be resources that are not scarce, well, yeah, kind of, but no, those things that are in unlimited supply at no cost really don't exist in a practical sense. Finally, competing and unlimited wants. I want as much of anything as I can get my hands on, and I'm betting you do too. So for any given resource, our wants may be competing. Our wants can be considered unlimited. Besides, who wants only one goal? when you can have all of the gold. So now what? We've got to figure out how we are going to distribute the resources we have. We can do this in a number of ways. We can do one for each, like dealing a poker hand. We can give each according to his needs, like Karl Marx and later John Rawls. Or we can use kind of a steel cage death match. But before we figure out how we're going to distribute our resources, we've got to back up and ask four specific questions. What will be produced? How will it be produced? Who will get the products? And when will those products be delivered? What will be produced? If producers are producing what the consumers don't want, they'll stop producing them. Even though the Betamax was technologically superior to the VHS, you don't see many Betamaxes around. Laser discs, Windows Millennium Edition, all of these items were created and the consumers did not want them. The next one is how will it be made? By what means will the items be produced? Are they going to be done by hand or is it going to be done by machine? You know, how do you want your burger cooked? Who will get the products? How will we decide who gets the goods and services? How do we decide? You know, think back to the steel cage death match. And when will the products be delivered? If you go to the coffee house stand on campus, you purchase the goods, they're delivered immediately. You go and buy a car, you sign a paper promising to pay, you get the car and you're going to pay over time, usually anywhere from five to eight years. If you put something on layaway, you're going to pay for it until it's completely paid off, and then you'll receive the goods after the fact. Now, in order to produce goods, you need not only to have a market for the good produced, you need to produce them somehow. Now, bear in mind, when I say products, I mean both goods and services. Economists don't make a distinction between goods as products and services as products. But remember I said we've got to figure out the somehow? Well, in economics, the somehow is the factors of production. Your book says there are three factors. There are actually four. Land, labor, capital, and management. Land is a gift from nature. If you are building a hut, 
you will use land not only to build the hut on, but the wood to build the hut itself. Both the ground and the hut are land. Labor, the work that is needed to create the project. When writing programs for a, p a computer, there are people who think up the idea, there are people who write the programs, debug the system, press the CDs, and package and ship the software. All of these are part of labor. Capital. Now, capital is divided into two separate categories. The first one is physical capital. These are the things that are used to create the product. This can be the donut machine, the computer farm at Facebook, or the actual hatchet that you use to cut the tree down to build your hut. There's also financial capital. This is the money. You've got to buy the grills, computers, and hatchets, don't you? Finally, there's management, what your book calls entrepreneurship. Do you think that if Zuckerberg hadn't taken a chance and dropped out of Harvard, that there would be a Facebook? Or a Microsoft? Or the Oprah Winfrey Network? The management is the, the kind of the take a chance aspect of production.